once upon a time in Wyoming, Southern Gal wanted to rustle up some hot chili to eat with her man out by the campfire. This here's the way it all went down. Hey guys, I'm about to make some yummy chili for us to have by the campfire tonight. So if you want to learn my recipe for chili, come on in. First up, the little gal had to get some vittles. So the first thing you're going to need is a pound of ground beef. I bought organic ground beef, 85% lean, 15% fat. You can make it leaner than that if you want. It's just personal preference. Then you're going to want a large white onion. You're going to want a bulb of garlic. And we'll talk about that, about how much you use in a minute. Two cans of Rotel tomatoes and chilies. And I usually get one regular can and one mild can. And you can also get hot. And I do make that at home a lot for Sean and myself, but sometimes that's too hot for our guests. So going on the more conservative side today. You'll also want some chili powder and chili beans. The recipe was said to be an old family secret passed down from generation to generation. This recipe actually came from the side of a can of chili beans many years ago. Um, the style of beans are called ranch style beans and they're sold pretty widely in the south but I'm out west in Wyoming right now and I can't find them anywhere. So this probably won't taste exactly like what I make at home but this is as close as I can come for where I am. But these are chili beans, which are basically pinto beans in a mild chili sauce. The other few things that I encourage you to get to make your chili even better are the fixins, as we like to say in the South. And this is for after the chili is made, you can put this on top. I've got four cheese, Mexican style uh, shredded cheese right here, but you could use just sharp cheddar, mild cheddar, whatever you prefer to sprinkle on the top of your chili. And then some sour cream to put on top. And then of course, some crunchy little Frito corn chips makes it even better. Those will be used at the very end. You're basically just wanna chop up this entire onion. I like to chop it pretty fine, but it's just personal preference. And then you are also going to want your garlic. So I busted this bulb up. These are the little garlic cloves. And the recipe calls for one garlic clove. I am gonna put more because I like garlic. So it's personal preference. This is just what I like to do. So if you're not a fan of garlic, don't put any more than one clove in. I'm gonna put about five cloves in. I'm also gonna tell you about this handy little gadget. It is a garlic peeler. If you don't have one of these, it makes things so much easier. We'll put a link to it in our Amazon store. But basically you put your little clove in and then you just push down and you roll it. Kind of roll it back and forth like that. And you dump it out and look, it's got all the peeling with the exception of that one piece off. So voila. With enough garlic to choke a vampire, the little lady kept on a chopping. This is probably a little over a cup, cup and a half or so of chopped onion. Again, it doesn't have to be precise. It's whatever you like. If you like onion, put more. Um, chopping the garlic now, just chop it as fine as you like. If you're at home or if you are at a full hookup campground, you could chop this in a food chopper, make it go much faster. So now I've got the onions and the garlic all chopped up. I'm going to light my burner here on kind of a low heat, I guess. And we're just going to dump all the onion garlic in all the onion and garlic mixed together there. We're gonna let that cook for just a second and then we're gonna add the ground beef. The onions and garlic got along like Sonny and Cher before the divorce. Uh, 
onions and garlic are softening up a little bit. That's what I wanted. I just want to get them going. So now I'm going to just start adding the ground beef and I'm just going to put it in little chunks. So I'm just pinching off little pieces and just going to add it all in. As she worked, the thought of that organic cow making the ultimate sacrifice brought tears to the little lady's eyes. Or maybe it was just all those onions. Yeah, it makes your ass water for sure. Honestly, this is when you want to use the exhaust fan above your, your oven or your cooktop. So I'm going to kick that on and that'll help dissipate some of that. All right, so we're just gonna keep stirring this. We want all the meat to be nice and brown, no pink left. So just keep stirring it around and I'll try to break up the bigger pieces. The delightful smell of sizzling cow filled up the little lady's trailer. Smells good. I'm gonna turn this off for just a second. All right, everything's cooked all the way through. Now I'm gonna add both cans of tomatoes and the beans. So let's get this going. Of course, the lady could have grown her own tomatoes and chilies and beans, but that would have taken an extra six months or so. And her man was real hungry. There's one. This little southern lady had the wrong western beans. But she charged on ahead like Admiral Farragut in the Battle of Mobile Bay. Then we're gonna add. One palm full of chili powder. <laughs> I would say it's about a tablespoon. All right, I'm gonna turn the heat back on. Put it on low, mix it up really good. Pretty soon, all those ingredients were getting along and singing kumbaya together, like they were at church camp. All right, so we want to bring that to a boil. Boil. You can turn the heat down to low and then cover it and let it simmer for about eight minutes or so. A hoe cake sounds like something you might find inside a Las Vegas bordello, but these hoes were different from what you might expect. So normally when I make chili, I will make cornbread to go with it. I've shared my cornbread recipe here before. Um, we'll put a link to it in the description box down below. So if you missed it, you can go back and watch it. This is my cornbread mix recipe, but instead of pouring it in the skillet and cooking it in the oven, I'm gonna make hoe cakes, basically. Hoe cake? <laughs> there are a lot of different recipes for hoe cakes, but basically it's just sort of simple cornbread that is in little bitty, like, flapjack sized pieces. You mean low, low hoe cakes? Low, low hoe cakes. I like it. <laughs> I've got uh, some vegetable oil in here that's hot. Just a little coating on the bottom of the cast iron skillet. This is my cornbread mix in here. And what I did is I put a little bit of canola oil uh, coating this little quarter cup measuring cup because I'm going to scoop my mix out with that and that way it won't stick. So I'm just going to plop it down in here and sort of put a little bit more. And if you can spread it out and make it a little thinner, it'll be a little crispier. That hoe started to sizzle in the hot pan. I'm going to make sure we're at a tilt a little bit, so I'm just going to tilt it so the grease will get all the way around it. 
mean this rig is not entirely level. Once the edges bubble just a little bit, go ahead, flip it over. So it's basically like a cornmeal cake. Look up. Cornmeal pancake. It is. Cornbread pancake. Meanwhile, in the chili pot. Yep, chili's chili's done. Chili is ready. If you like your chili really soupy, you can add an extra can of the tomatoes. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna put a little dollop of sour cream on the top. Well, a little kale, a little tofu. What? Organic corn chips. One of those crunchy hoe cakes. And so, the little lady and her man finally had their hot chili. Sure, the beans were wrong. And the recipe came from the side of a can. But let me tell you something. The eating was good that night by the campfire, my friends. The eating was good. And I have to say that these hoe cakes are a thing of genius. Here's to the hoes. the Lolo house. Hey guys, we are actually giving away a Halo View wireless rear camera system. This is the M5111 and we're going to, woo, that was not good. <laughs> it includes a five inch 720p wireless monitor that will go inside your tow vehicle and a separate 720p wireless camera you will attach to the back of your RV. So this way you can monitor what's going on behind your RV or trailer or what have you as you're towing down the highway. To win this camera, all you gotta do is sign up for the Long Long Honeymoon newsletter. There will be a link below. The winner of the camera system will be chosen at random from our newsletter membership list. So sign up for the Long Long Honeymoon newsletter and you might win a really nice Halo View wireless rear vision camera system.